Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Café Enchanté, and we're just starting back in, well, we're starting Chapter 2 of Cowder's Route, and, well, fuck! We were just handed a bitch slap at the end of the last part, weren't we? Like, hey, by the way, Mikado's girlfriend is that fox doll he carries around. Oh, but by the way, it's not actually a doll, it's alive. Oh, and it, it used to be a person, and now it's not, and oh, it's my sister. What the fuck? So, wow, here we go. We're just going to see what happens now. Mr. Rindo discloses to me the identity of Ku. Despite the shocking revelation, time goes on as usual, bringing about a new and normal day. What is that goddamn creaking noise, though? Are we grinding beans? That's what it is. <laughs> and so, I'm here, as usual, opening the cafe and greeting the guests inside. Yeah, but, it's, but we're not going to talk about that. Maybe later? She's grinding the beans. Uh, Spacey? Over grinding the beans. I did ask for my coffee to be a bit stronger than usual, but isn't that a bit too much? Hmm. She has been at it, grinding the coffee for about an hour now. What? Okay, I lied. How are things today? Absolutely not normal. This isn't good. I need to... I need to act normal. Okay. Hmm. As something undoubtedly happened at the GPM, uh, maybe we should ask her. Well, yeah, but I'm not sure we should pry if she isn't bringing it up naturally with us. Is there truly a problem with her? She's acting a bit peculiar, but her vital signs seem to be in order. Hmm. I think it's more mental than physical. What the heck? Hey, Spacey! Huh? Oh, are you ready to pay? Um, it comes out to 23 million. Why, you sleazy little no good. That price is a joke, right? Oh, huh? W wait a sec. Uh, let me calculate again. Hold on a sec. I ain't paying yet. Huh? Really? Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, then you want steak? Uh, I mean, if you're still gonna make it, I'll eat it. She's like, you want to say, what, well, no, what, yeah, I mean, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Got it, I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, wait! Um, she's gone. Ah, the hell is wrong with her? She's not listening at all. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on, but something is clearly off with her. I thought he was going to say wrong. Yeah, a little bit, but off works too. Hmm. I can only hope that she is okay. <laughs> Phew! I let out a sigh after going into the kitchen. Ugh, I've messed everything up today. I have to compose myself. I keep telling myself to get it together as I grill a steak for Ignis. But... Hmm? Ah, that's right. I'm so sorry. It's time to eat. I guess my dear girlfriend is more interested in food than fashion. <laughs> Here you go, Ku. It started out like, oh, Mikado is sad and oh, oh no, this is disturbing. <laughs> I like that. I didn't see that one coming and I applaud it for like, really? That was not, what? Like, he's always carrying around the fox on. You're like, oh, he's a little weird. Okay. I thought it was like an actual pet supposed to be like a real fox. And I was like, no, it's just a doll. It doesn't move. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You're sure fine. And then the whole, it's my girlfriend. Oh, you're disturbed. Look, we all have some issues with our man harems and whatever. That's fine. But like, we don't actually walk around. This is my girlfriend. Cardboard cutout. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't actually all really do that. So, you just thought that he would... Oh, 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 sweetie. No, you're sad and weird. <laughs> no, it's more disturbing than that. Like, holy shit, mind blown. What a scene. I instinctively cover my mouth just thinking about what happened yesterday. A former human turned non-human? And its real identity was... Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, wait. Beep, beep, back it up. A former human turned non-human. So that's a thing, right? I just, I, just now, 
I know, I know. Those pieces were floating around like, hello, put us together. And it took me to, okay, fine. shut up. It took me like 24 hours to figure that one out. Um, but I feel like that doesn't bode well for us in the scheme of this game, either this route or just in the rest of the game. If this is the natural progression where like ill and miser like miser you can't do until the end or like and it, it like it this is just something that was supposed to come out at some point and you're supposed to what um so are you telling me i could become a non-human if some kind of freak accident whatever happened to his sister is that supposed to be that's why that's a th is that a th mm, i'm worried no okay all right and its real identity was mr rindo's younger sister <laughs> i know we're there with you girl Mikado was talking to Ku happily as if it wasn't supposed to be a doll. Well, that's because it wasn't. And then Ku moved and bit Mikado's scarred arm. Behind me was Mr. Rindo, who was looking on as if he had lost all hope in something. Yeah, because his little sister is like a monster, kind of. I can't get the image of what happened out of my mind. Uh, yeah, no. A former human... A human turned non-human. Again, she keeps saying it, so I just feel like the game is trying to, like, poke and be like, hey, just just be prepared. I've never heard of that, even after I took ownership of Enchante. I wonder what happened to Mr. Rindo's younger sister. Well, I... I mean, she turned into Ku. <laughs> How that happened is what we're wondering. I have no idea, or even the slightest clue of how that was possible. But if that did happen, would myself... My mother and everyone I know be worried of me t be worried for me of turning into a non-human? Something like that. Worried about me turning into a non-human? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Ugh. No amount of thinking is going to help me out here. I had an opportunity. I was thinking about using the opportunity to ask Mr. Rindo questions, but he looked like he was in pain. At the very least, I was in no position to ask him to re to relive whatever happened. Okay, so that makes the face that he had in the earlier part of the last part. Don't don't talk about his girlfriend. It looked like he was disgusted and sick to his stomach, but it was funny at the time because you're like, well, that's fun. Now it's disturbing. Well, look at me putting my foot in my mouth. You're like, <laughs> look at that face he's making. Like, don't ask about it. Oh my God, it's crazy. And he was more like, don't ask about it because it was traumatizing for him. Okay. I'm an asshole, but, you know, whatever. What else is new? Yeah. Which is why I left as soon as I could, once Karia finished up his medical checkup. I wonder if Mr. Rindo will come today. <sighs> oh, I better get back to Ignis's order. Well, I have a feeling I misheard what he said. I better get back out there. As soon as I serve the steak, Ignis eats it in an instant. Then... <laughs> They're all just staring at me. Well, we assume Candace is staring at me, but... Uh, can I ask why everyone is staring at me? Why are they looking at me? You haven't been yourself today. We're just worried about you as your patrons. Spacey, if there is something on your mind, let us know. We may be able to help. Well, uh... It depends on what's bothering you, but we can... Ease your worries. Yeah, great choice of words there, bud. Anyway, you're only screwing up our lives by keeping this mess up. Not like we can force you, but if something's on your mind, spill it. He's right. I'm not helping, and it isn't good for Enchante if I stay like this. But it isn't that simple. I mean, it's not my place to share something so personal without Mr. Rindo's consent. Don't talk. This isn't about me, but everyone here knows Mr. Rindo. To add, I do trust everyone here. If so, I can only say so much. And that's okay. Take your time and think about how you want to say it. I nod, hearing Miser's kind and warm words, because he's best boy and this is... You're going to rip my heart out. You, like, my, maybe literally. I don't even know. Keeping what I know to myself isn't going to get me answers. I have a feeling you're route. I'm going to be like, I wish we just go back to when we were just friends because you hurt me. I don't know. I hope it's not like that. Look, this game is just kind of like, I don't know. After some thought, I decided to talk about what I heard, but without delving into too many details. Um, 
Do you mind if I ask a question? Is there a way for humans to become non-humans? Huh? Humans turn into non-humans? Hmm. Aside from how Karya lived thinking he was a human, no, nothing comes to mind. I'm gonna say that maybe it's not a natural thing and maybe it's something like crazy motherfucking Mikado did. Like some kind of weird-ass experiment. And maybe that's why he's lost his fucking marbles because he's like responsible for this. Something the GPM did is what I would guess, but... I agree with Canis. I've never heard of such a thing. You're not talking about guys who have both human and non-human parents, right? Like, you're asking whether you as a human could turn into a non-human, yeah? Well, um, yes, exactly. I haven't lived long, as long as everyone else here, but I never heard of anything like that either. <clears throat> I'm not doing his voice right, it's like falling out. Canis, Ill, and Ignis all said they've never heard of that, but... Miser's over there like, uh, no, mm -mm, can't say I have. <laughs> How about you, Miser? His brows twitch as he slowly begins to speak. Mm. Well, I've never heard about it before, but that could be possible. Huh? Is that surprising? W well, yes. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between a human and a non-human? Uh, huh? Um, well, the appearance? Being human? Is the difference? One's a human, one's not? Yes, but we have a lot in common. Like, we both have two arms and legs and a nose and a mouth. You have to admit there are a lot of non-humans who don't look any different from humans. Look at Ilan Ignis. Even Canis looks like a human when he has that helmet of his on. Okay, not a normal one, but... Uh, like a weirdo. But yeah, okay. Uh, I suppose... <laughs> like, even Canis... Not really, he's missing a head! <laughs> like... <laughs> most of you can pass. Canis cannot. He is not... He's gotta wear a bag on his head or something. Like, I mean... I'm just saying. He's the most standout-ish one as not being human. But, but you guys can use magic and all kinds of superpowers and such. Superpowers. Superpowers. I don't know why I can't read. Hmm. I know this is going to sound strange, but we look at humans the same way. That we can't wield magic. Wow, it's a novel idea. Like, take that smartphone of yours. When you think about it, it's a lot more impressive than most of the magic we use. Yeah, but my telephone... But I can't use my phone to, like, open the fridge, get a drink. <laughs> I have to get up and get it. Like, <laughs> you might not have magic that does that, though. What if your magic is like, I can create magical barriers for magical zombies. Okay, well, there are no magical zombies here, so that would... Yeah, no, my smartphone's better. Just saying. Except for when the Wi-Fi goes down, you're like, son of a bitch, what do I do? I'm just saying. Does your Wi-Fi ever go down, i.e. your magic? No, I bet it doesn't. Yeah. Because I bet your internet company, i.e. your body, is better than the one I'm fucking paying for, sons of bitches. What? I'm still mad. <laughs> It just, it just came out that way. It just happened in this part of the conversation. Anyway. Heck, you can use it to control, uh, contact others on the other side of this world. Well, I understand what Miser's getting at. Miser continues the conversation, but I can't help but frown as I try to digest what he's saying. And someday we'll have chips in our brain that let us do the same thing without using a little device in our hands. I don't really think the differences between a human and a non-human are so numerous. First of all, it's not like nature decided to determine who's a human and who's a non-human. Well, I guess, but... What about the type 2s where you're not even human, you're like an animal? Oh, that's just absurd. Mr. Rindu has kept telling me that humans and non-humans are different. When I saw Ku move yesterday, the first thought that came to mind was that it was a non-human, but... Even so, Mikado was treating it like it was a human being. Which means that, to Mikado... Ku is more than just a non-human. In other words, whether it was a human or non-human, it didn't matter. So what makes us different? You're not a fox that barely moves and eats the blood of a... researcher? I'm just saying. Oh, she froze again. Come on, you gotta be kidding! In any case, we better not pry any further. We should move to a table for now. Mr. Rindo, 
I wonder how he views humans and non-humans. As for Ku, I wonder what really happened with his younger sister. Spacey, Reno keeps things to himself, so if you want to know more, you need to dig a little deeper. He may put on that he trusts you, but I'm sure he's still cautious. I guess you could say he's just trying to act more like a mature adult. Miser. Wait, I, I never said anything about Mr. Rindo. Huh? It's pretty obvious considering you've been acting like this since you last saw him. I mean, there are only so many people from the GPM that you'd be concerned for. Uh, y you're right. Miser chuckles, hearing me agree. Mr. Rindo acting like an adult. I reflect back on my interactions with him. I was like, the car scene? The car scene. Mr. Rindo does treat me well, but he never seems to be vulnerable with me. I guess you could say he didn't let me get too involved with him. As far as I could tell. Also, my work is so specialized that I can't vent about it to most people. I thought it'd be nice to have someone to talk to. I recall him saying something like that. Well, he hasn't vented to me yet, that's for sure. I was hoping you wouldn't have found out. Mr. Rindo seemed like he didn't want to talk much back then, either. Maybe it's because he thinks he's getting going to get hurt if he starts to talk about something as personal as this. It's gotta hurt to talk about it. I can relate to that a little bit. I'm afraid he thinks of me as a stranger. Just the thought of it brings a sharp pain to my heart. It's been a while since I've been at Enchante. I thought I was pretty close to Mr. Rindo. He's always been kind and thoughtful, but maybe his kindness was just a way to put some distance between us. I don't mind him discussing things with me, or even opening up and being vulnerable. <laughs> You've shared a lot with me, and I thought it best to be equal with you about myself. In order to be treated as an equal, he needs to open up to me. But the fact that Mr. Rindo doesn't talk to me candidly must mean that I'm not an important person to him. It's like she's all of a sudden having a crisis. <laughs> like, he, I'm not important to him. Oh, do you starting to feel like a crush for him? It, I mean, that's the route we're going down, but like, you know. Well, I guess in his eyes, I'm just a kid and too young to be talking with about his painful past. It's frustrating, to be quite honest. I have this strange sensation in my heart the more my mind races. As I keep thinking, or rather pouting, I hear a chuckle from a certain someone. Like I said, you need to really get up close and personal with him, or else he'll just keep pulling away. Up close and personal? Uh, but isn't that a bit much? <laughs> you worry too much. Arindo wouldn't mind at all. I've known him for a while now. I know where he draws the line. And that said, he is a lot more conservative than he looks, so it won't be easy getting close to him. I see. Thank you, Miser. You're welcome. As a patron, that's about all I can do for our dear cafe owner. I have to admit, I'm such a softie when it comes to helping out the rivals in my life. Miser says with a bright smile as he places an order for a refill of coffee, the same coffee he's been waiting for for an hour. Um, I think it's funny that he's like, the rivals in my life. The love rivals. Nobody rivals you, Miser. You're my favorite. He's right. If I want to know more, I need to get closer to him. Hearing Miser's words of advice is making me feel more confident in myself. I grab the grinder and try to focus so that I won't make the same mistake as the first cup. The one that he never got. Poor fucker. You've been grinding that coffee for an hour. In the afternoon, on another day, I'm out walking down the street with Ignis in tow. I asked Karia to watch the cafe so that I could buy some supplies. With my grocery bag filled with meat, we head back on to we head on back to Enchante. Well, wow. I was taking a nap, you know. You should ask Canis to come. He would have followed you like a dog. But you are a dog. Canis is in Medio. Mind you, you were the one eating up all the meat in the cafe. Ignis' mouth twitches a bit. Whatever. You better grill him good. <laughs> you got it. With Ignis half compliant, I take out my phone. Weird. I haven't received a single message from Mr. Rindo today. 
I was planning on asking Mr. Rindo more questions when he comes to the cafe to discuss coup, but these past few days, Mr. Rindo hasn't shown up. He doesn't want to see you. I've sent a message to him, and he usually responds with he's too busy. Not much of a reply, really. He's trying to avoid it. Maybe... Maybe Mr. Rindo doesn't want to talk, period. He could be avoiding Enchanté now so that he doesn't have to put up with me asking him questions. You wouldn't have found out. I keep hearing what he said in my head. Hmm. What? Oh, well, I was just thinking that Mr. Rindo hasn't stopped by recently. Huh? If you want to see him, why don't you just go and visit? Shinjuku's right around the corner. Well, Ignis is right. It's not like anything is stopping me from traveling such a short distance to see him. Then again, I don't think I have the guts to barge in on his work just to ask him why he isn't texting me. Yeah, that seems a little odd. Then again, it's probably better for me to see him in person instead of trying to get an answer from him by text. And even if I tried to get him to answer through text, he'd probably just completely ignore it. That's when you just ignore him. And eventually... He'll come running back. He'll just be like, why are you ignoring me? Seriously, bitch! Also, you know what? This is the difference between young and old. I ain't got time for this shit. You're gonna ignore me like that? Okay, bye! I guess we're not friends anymore then. Whatever. My friends know that, like, we don't talk to each other for, like, weeks or months at a time. And then it's like, hey, what's up? Hey, hi, how are you? Like, nothing ever happened. Again, that's what happens when you get old. Hmm. Forgot that part, sorry. Man, you're acting weird. I can tell Ignis is staring at me. It's not surprising, considering I can't stop frowning the more my mind wanders. I look up and notice a park up ahead. Huh? Eh, what's wrong now? Over there. I notice some guys standing in front of the park wearing suits that remind me of a certain organization. It's because it's literally like the team tie. They seem to be preventing a mother and child from entering. I'm very sorry. Oh, what's going on? We've received reports that the playground equipment is broken, so this area is off limits until everything is repaired. Oh, really? Uh, I can't play at the park. I apologize, but for your safety, we'd like to ask you for you to leave until things are repaired. Broken playground equipment? Wait a second. Ignis, aren't they? Members of the GPM. Which means they're up to no good. I doubt there's a need to turn everyone away just because of broken equipment. I can only assume there's something there that the GPM wants to keep people away from. I wonder what's going on. Come on, if it's GPM related, it has to be about non-humans. If that's the case, maybe Mr. Rindo is around. I stare at the park from afar, trying to find someone I may know there. Uh, why the funny face? If you're so curious, why don't you just go over there? Huh? Uh, but they won't let anyone in. That doesn't mean you can't get in. Without a chance to reply, Ignis lifts me off the ground. Somehow, everything is upside down. My body, my body bounces up and down with every step. Before I knew it, I'm in the park. See? Nothing to it. Tell me before you do something like that! Yeah, whatever. Just pipe down, will ya? The GPM is gonna find us. <laughs> like, I was curious! So Ignis jumped us into the park! I cover my mouth and look around. See, non-humans couldn't do this. But no matter how hard I look, I don't see anything strange in sight. Huh. There's nothing going on. Looks like it. This park is pretty huge. Maybe there's something... Before Ignis could finish his thought, a roar is heard from the center of the park. That sounded like an explosion, but okay, roar. Bingo. So what now? You want to check it out? I quietly nod to answer Ignis's question. That's gunfire. And a flamethrower. I hear gunshots and explosions. Oh, okay, that was an explosion. That sounded more like a flamethrower, but... Sounds that aren't normal in these parts, though I've gotten used to them ever since I took owner took over Enchanté. <laughs> Explosions and gunshots, that's not normal, but I've gotten used to it. <laughs> Which would explain why I didn't hide in fear as soon as I heard any of it. We hid behind the bushes 
Oh, we hide behind the bushes and look in the direction of the commotion. Huh? What is that? Grrr! The non-human was so huge that I didn't notice the GPM surrounding it. <laughs> They're like, they should have just... I'm sorry, ma'am, there's a lion loose in the park. What? Yeah. It looks like the GPM has their sights set on it as they continue to fire their weapons at it. Oh, looks like he put up one hell of a fight. Ignis looks rather excited as he puts on a smile. <laughs> As for me, I'm more nervous than excited since I have no idea what's going on. Uh. I take notice of a familiar face standing among the chaos. He's facing the non-human with some of the GPM members. I finally found Mr. Rindo. The men are closing in on the surrounded non-human uh, following the detailed orders given by Mr. Rindo. Good. Now, use the suppress... Suppressio? Suppressio? Are we magicking it? That's like... Sir! On Mr. Rizno's command, the men fire their weapons. It sounds like they're it was supposed to be like the suppressor, the suppression, but like that wouldn't make sense either, but... Ah, oh, maybe that's not... Immediately after, Mr. Rindo tosses a round object towards the non-human. Upon contact, it explodes, dispersing light pink smoke around the area. The smoke drifts so far that it reaches the bushes where we're hiding. It reaches the bushes we're hiding behind. Uh oh. <coughs> what the hell is this? Damn it, Reeks! Huh? I don't smell anything. That can only mean whatever Mr. Rindo just tossed out there must have been one of those non-human weapons. I look towards where the grenade was tossed to find the non-human slowly losing its motor functions. <laughs> you know, I was like... And she's like, I don't smell anything. I'm like, oh, it's going to guess Ignis. And we're going to have to drag him back. Ignis just fell asleep. I don't know how we're getting out of the park. I'm just going to hide the bushes. Seizing the opportunity, Mr. Rindo quickly closes in on it and... I'm sorry. That's all they could hear from him. He puts his gun to its head and pulls the trigger. The non-human slowly crumples to the ground. Like he killed it. I mean, it's dangerous, but, like, you could, like, log it up and send it back to where it came from. Just saying. It lands with a loud thud and kicks up dust into the air. Grrr. The non-human meekly cries out its final roar as if it were calling to someone for help. It stops moving. Seeing the life leave its body, Mr. Rindo slowly lays down his weapon. He turns around to the other GPM members. Mission complete. Do you guys mind? Sir! With Mr. Rindo's orders, the GPM men lift the non-human into a container. Immediately after, the GPM go around to the other men. It looks like they're carrying out their own injured men from the front line. They were moving in formation and very systematically, uh, suggesting they've done this many times before. I'm not sure what to do now. Should I come out and show myself, or should I just keep hiding? As I ponder what to do. Damn, you got some moves, Rindo! Before I could stop Ignis, he steps out and starts up a conversation. How did it not knock him out? <laughs> like, he didn't walk out of the bushes. He, like, rolled out like a jelly blob. Hey! I got a motor function. Uh. Of course, Mr. Rindo looks towards us and fixes his gaze on me. Ignis... You too, Spacey. I slowly come out of the bushes, a bit embarrassed to be found like this. Oh my god, fuck off spam calls. You two were spying from there. That was dangerous. Well, I guess Ignis would have been okay, but... Oh, uh, we were just walking by when we noticed the GPM outside the park, so... I haphazardly explain what happened and why we were there, to which Mr. Rindo chuckles in disbelief. I just needed to see you, because you've been avoiding me, you son of a bitch! So I got myself into a dangerous situation! I mean, basically. As for Ignis, he's very vocal about how Mr. Rindo could have done better and how he'd like to challenge him to a fight. Ignis is elbowing him, jo elbowing him jokingly, but... As for me, I'm not really sure what to say, especially with the current situation I'm in. You look a bit nervous. Did that scare you? 
Oh, uh, no! It's just that... Huh. It looks like that non-human lion was taken away. I can see a large truck driving away from the park. About that non-human... Is it... Um... Dead? I chose my words carefully as I questioned Mr. Rindo. Yeah. Our tranquilizer didn't work and he attacked a number of people. I want to say something, but... I'm not sure how. Mr. Rindo notices my struggling and starts a conversation. I mean, I guess it'd be no different than a lying lion, an actual lion running through the park. Ah! Murdering people, they'd be like, we tried to trank it, but at some point we're going to have to put it down because otherwise people are going to be pissed. But it's kind of like, but you could always tranquilize it. You know what I mean? Like, people aren't going to be happy either way. You just let the lion live after it mauled Timmy? Or you kill it. Like, why would you kill the lion? It did nothing wrong. Like, you're never going to win. But, like, I mean, you try to trank it, and if the tranquilizers don't work, I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> Still kind of sucks, but, I mean, I get where he's coming from, I guess. And that kid was a type 2 non-human. He actually lived here among the humans for roughly 30 years. Huh? Mr. Rindo forces a smile as he looks at my surprised face. I know it's hard to believe after witnessing what happened here, but he was once a quiet little kitten. He came here 30 years ago, wandering into an elderly woman's home where he was adopted into her family. He didn't pose any threat, so the GPM classified him as a Type 2. We kept tabs on him, but now I'm looking at my birds. Are you a Type 2 non-human? You're gonna turn into, like, a giant pterodactyl? Yeah, he kinda. Never mind. You already were a pterodactyl. You've regressed. A few days ago, the woman who fostered him passed away. Oh, so we got angry and sad and... Destroyed people? Oh, He was in pain. And since then, the kid continued the woman's daily routine, walking around town as they used to together. And the moment he saw someone resembling her, he attacked. At first, I think it was all... I think... Oh. At first, I think all it was to him was roughhousing and playing around. But after finding out that the woman was no longer around, he began to get violent... Oh, he was in denial, and then that was rage. And that's dangerous when you're a giant fucking lion beast, I guess. And sure enough, the GPM had to classify him as a Type 3 non-human. A Type 3 non-human. Impossible to communicate with. Deemed hostile based on their behavior. I assume he didn't know humans have shorter lifespans than many of the other non-humans. Mr. Rindo looks in the direction the truck drove off, uh, drove off to. He seems calm and strangely indifferent. It's hard to tell what's really going on inside his head. Time seems to fly by. Mr. Rindo and I take a seat on a bench after Ignis tells us that we both don't look too great. As for Ignis, he heads back to the cafe with the groceries so the meat doesn't spoil, despite the fact that we've been hanging on the park for like hours. I'm gazing at the GPM members cleaning up after the chaos. There are those who conceal their intent tactfully and later exert their powers. And that power that's exerted can be at such a tremendously terrifying scale, capable of taking many human lives. I recall the strange speech that Mr. Rindo gave me a while ago. Back then, I didn't really understand what he meant by that. Oh, what he really meant by that. It felt really out of place to me, but... Okay, wow. Back then, I really didn't understand what he really meant by that. It felt really out of place to me, but really? <laughs> really. Now I realize that he was hinting at the po oh yeah, hinting at the potential tragedy that non-humans can bring. I spent a good amount of time with the regulars at Enchante. It made me think that I knew and understood the non-humans. I thought I knew everything. But in reality... Oh, now she's going to start doubting the non-humans and, like, not trusting them because, like, Rindo doesn't... Like, meh. Like, I understand being like, wow, yeah, no, I guess I just assumed everybody was cool, like our friends. But I hope she doesn't get to be like, I can't trust you, you freaks! Like, I hope she doesn't turn that way. I mean, admitting you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I just assumed everyone was, like, our regulars and I wasn't really thinking about... But it's weird because in every other one, there's, like, dangerous beasts and shit. And she was like... She saw the Minotaurs in fucking Bestia. She's already kind of been there. She saw Kororo's family ripped to shreds. I mean, she saw bloodstains everywhere. So she kind of knows that they're violent. So this, this, 
wow, this realization is kind of like months late, I guess. I just feel like, really, you acting like this is the first instance you've seen, but the fairies threw you off a fucking cliff. Okay. Because they were playing. Giggle, giggle, thought it was fun, and you were attacked. But I'm just saying, you've been in instances where you should be like, yeah, humans and non-humans are essentially the same. Yeah. Humans and non-humans are different. No, they're basically the same. There's some good ones, and then there's psycho murderers. Okay. I mean, what? You think you're going to, like, it's a goddamn walk in the park, you're not going to get stabbed by some random psychopath? I'm just saying. Like... I feel like this is a little too late. You know what I mean? Like, wow, non-humans can be violent? Really? But you, I What? Seriously? The, do we forget the common? Ra- okay. Anyway, humans and non-humans are different and also very much the same. I find myself squeezing my own wrist at a reflex. Out of nowhere, a bottle of milk tea is handed to me. Spacey. I look up to see Mr. Rindo's smile. Come to think of it, he did say that he was going to the vending machine. Thank you very much. I take the bottle from Mr. Rindo. He sits down next to me. I'm feeling better? Yes. I'm glad to hear that. Mr. Rindo smiles again and takes a sip from his can of coffee. I follow suit and take a gulp of the milk tea he just gave me. It was nice and warm, and the sweetness spread through my body. I know it was by sheer coincidence, but I'm glad you were here. You got to see another side of the non-humans. Again, compared to the violent ones that we've already seen? You're the owner of Enchante. I vaguely hear Mr. Rindo's mumble. Humans and non-humans in coexistence. It sounds like a good idea, but I've seen my share of how it can end. I've seen a non-human made of fire who burned his lover al- alive after trying to comfort her with a hug. How do you... I... How do you... Huh. <laughs> Just... An aquatic non-human wanted to play with his friend and ended up dragging him underwater where he drowned. And like what happened here, they don't understand that their beloved died, so they begin to wander aimlessly. What's sad is that none of them killed their loved ones out of malice. They simply wanted to show their affection, but it resulted in the deaths of those innocent humans. Again, I just feel like you're setting me up that I'm going to accidentally die or become some kind of stuffed animal or some shit. Like, (laughs) I don't... This does not bode well for Ellen Miser's routes, is all I'm saying, okay? I mean, nothing... Like, Candace's route, we were fine. The fairies threw us off a cliff, but we didn't die. That was in the main route, but whatever. And then, like... I mean, the tree tried to kill us. So, okay. I mean, that was that that was bad. So, technically, I feel like Rindo's route should be the first one you go down. It really kind of should have been like, go down his route first, because he's like... If you fall in love with a non-human, they're gonna end up trying to kill you! And then you go down Candace's route, and you're like, and the tree tried to kill me. Yeah, should've seen that coming. And then when you go down Ignis's route, you're like, everything tried to kill me! <laughs> Including Dromi, that son of a bit. You're like, yep, yeah, nope. I mean, and now in this one, it's gonna be fucking Mikado and Ku probably trying to fucking kill me. And like, I mean, I'm just saying, this warning I could've done with two routes ago, but... It just concerns me a lot more now. Anyway, what's normal to non-humans isn't normal to humans. And no one's really at fault here. Just a series of bad misunderstandings. But that's a critical difference between humans and non-humans. Mr. Rindo speaks in a calm manner. A bit too calm. It was as if he was hiding his feelings. Communication is key. Sweetie, you're on fire. Please don't touch me. Here you go, Koo. What's normal to non-humans isn't normal to humans. No one's really at fault here. It's a matter of bad misunderstandings. Those were Mr. Rindo's words. I need to ask. Is that what happened to your sister? 
Mr. Window doesn't say a word, but I can tell he's a bit tense now. Is that form of hers from this difference you just brought up? I instinctively, instinctively grab a hold of Mr. Window's arm, sensing that if he leaves, I'll never be able to ask again. Spacey, Mr. Window, can you please tell me what happened to her? I want to know more about what humans and non-humans really mean to you. I'm so close to him now that I can see his eyes shaking ever so slightly. And he's got that disgusted look. It's supposed to be like a pained look, I guess, but it literally just looks like he's about to vomit. Like, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. It literally... I don't think the expression you were going for is the one that's communicating here. because It was as if he was trying to fight off his anxieties. He's more like, Oh, why are you touching me? Ugh. Than like, painful memory. I don't know. It's like, that's just the way I see that expression, so I just can't... I can't take you seriously with it, buddy. Mr. Rindo goes deep into thought. I'll stop by the cafe later tonight. He musters whatever strength he has in him to mumble that in response. Bitch, I doubt it. I'm just kidding. I return to Enchante after parting ways with Mr. Rindo. Whoa! Hey, Kororo! Stop it! It's gonna spill! Kyo! Kororo was getting in the way of Karia trying to do something. Strangely enough, it felt good seeing them playful like that together. Thanks for keeping watch, Karia, and sorry for being late. By the way, what are you doing? Huh? Whoa! I didn't know you were back! I don't remember his voice, so like, whatever. Karia quickly places something on the counter before hiding it by standing in front. Well, that took forever. You look a bit better now. Sorry you had to carry everything back, Ignis. I feel awful about that. Nah, eh, don't worry about it. Anyway, take a look at this. What? I'm not done yet! Ignis quickly moves Karia aside. I look at the counter. Oh my god! It's a little Kuroto ice cream and a coffee! Look, it's so cute! Oh my god, it's Kororo art! Is that a coffee float? But it's a Kororo float! I love it! It's got a little horn and everything! <laughs> Fucking Unisil kills me. It's hard to believe, but it looks like Kario was making an iced coffee float all by himself. It's topped with vanilla ice cream and dressed with chocolate to look like Kororo and mint leaves. Wow, it's so cute. It really fucking is. I think I'm going to die. Huh. I don't recall having any ice in the fridge, though. And that's what you think. All you need is milk, cream, eggs, yolk, sugar, and vanilla. Oh, she said ice cream, did she? She says I don't recall having any ice in the fridge, though. And I was like, water? Freezer. It's not that hard to make ice. She meant ice cream. Okay. All you need is milk, cream, egg yolks, sugar, and vanilla essence blended together and placed on top of a Karia. Yes, Karia is quite splendid. And may the god of ice cream bless you. I'd rather be blessed for something else. Ugh. And more importantly, I'd rather not be compared to an ice cream maker. Huh? Wait, so Karia actually made the ice cream? Well, yes. Miser made the coffee, though. Kari has always helped me serve the coffee here, but I don't recall seeing him ever making anything before. Maybe he was trying to cheer me up after Ignis told him what happened to me earlier. He's like, this, is this for me? That's He's like, it was for me, bitch. What the fuck? It's not all about you. Thank you, Karia. Miser. I like they're gonna both going to be like, this is for us. God, selfish bitch. I mean, it probably is, but s stop it. I just thought it'd be great to have a new item on the menu. Kororo could enjoy it, too. Kororo jumps up and headbutts Karia and Joy, seemingly trying to match Karia's energy. Ouch! What? Kororo is headbutting you, too? I always thought Kororo only did that to Ignis. Well, he started doing it to me recently. Hmm, I suppose Kororo is much closer to Karia now. Wasn't that how the Pakus show their affection? 
Strange way to do it, if you ask me. Easy for you to say. Try getting punched in the gut every day. Kew! All that aside, why don't you try Karia's float? It's your call whether or not to put it on the menu. Sure thing. I mean, why wouldn't you unless it tastes like trash? It's fucking adorable. I take a sip of the coffee float. I mean, it's like, it's going to be on there for anybody. <laughs> the six people that come in here regularly. I'm surprised by how perfectly the sweet and bitter blends together. I mean, coffee ice cream is fucking amazing, so vanilla ice cream and coffee would sound fine. I'm just saying. Wow, it's so good. This is amazing. Huh, so it's owner approved? Sweet. I have more of the ice cream in the fridge, so you can use it to make other things. Karius scratches his rosy cheeks. He then takes a scoop of the ice cream from a storage container and gives it to Kororo. I bet it feels colder, uh, colder and tastes better with Karia scooping and feeding the ice cream to Kororo. Kororo lets out a happy squeal. They've spelled his name right the entire time so far. It's amazing. The ice fairy Karia and the Paku's... and the I, I'm thinking it's just Paku. Wasn't it? Because Paku sounds... Pluralized. I always thought it was pluralized, but maybe it's just that... I don't know, anyway. No, where Tim is a terrible typist and whatever. Uh, Kororo made a great team, but... Humans and non-humans in coexistence. It sounds like a good idea, but I've seen my fair share of how they end. But here's the thing, like, you've seen those, you have three examples of, like, traumatic instances, but... Think of all the humans and humans that have ended that way. He got mad and stabbed his girlfriend! She was, like, mentally ill and drowned her children. Like, I'm just saying. You're throwing this out there as if, like, no human has ever hurt another human. Mr. Rindo's words come to mind. And these poor people, like, yes, the non-human accidentally burned someone to death and drowned someone. It was an accident. Most of the time, like, there's way too many humans being like, fuck off! Goddamn spam calls! Leave me alone! Anyway, if Karia disappeared for some reason, would Kororo attack innocent humans just like the non-human I saw back at the park? Yeah, but you could punt him. He's small. To be specific, Karia is also a non-human, but he's lived in this world long enough to be called a human. Kororo is tiny. You could literally... I'm just saying, you could punt, kick him, and he'd be fine. So one day, they might have to part ways. And when that happens, who knows what kind of danger that'll create for them and everyone around. Like, she's getting a little too... Okay, look, I... I get it, but I really hope that this isn't the way this route's gonna go with her just being like, oh my god, but everyone, and then, like, not trusting... Because then I don't like Rindo at all. Like, seriously? Like, I don't know. I just had... I liked you a little better before, but now I'm like... This constant, like, oh no, everyone's bad. Oh, hu non-humans are kind of evil, and like, oh my god, they can hurt people. Again, we've seen this before. This is not new. I understand the like going through this doubt phase, like oh my god, but like would that happen? Would Kororo be really upset? Like, but if he's just gonna keep inciting all this doubt and everything in her head, and the whole route's gonna be like non-humans are evil, and like I don't know, I'm gonna it's gonna sour me on it. Like, like listen, Rindo, like let's not be a fucking bitch about shit, okay? I don't know, I don't know. I'm just. Not a fan of the way this is so far with the constant doubt and the... I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that's just... It's just bugging me about it. I don't know. Anyway. That may not be the only problem that arises. For example, what if Kororo grows larger and its horn grows just as large and sharp? If that happens, the affectionate headbook Kororo gives his friends could end up being fatal. I mean, okay, that's legit concern. Well, what's normal to non-humans isn't normal to humans. No one's really at fault here. It's a case of horrible misunderstandings. But that's a critical difference between humans and non-humans. Yes, but Kororo is like a dog. You have to teach him. Miser says that humans and non-humans don't look all that different. Mr. Rindo says that the differences between humans and non-humans are blatant. I think they're both right in their own way. 
And again, Rindo's just forgetting all the human on human violence. I'm just saying. So, what are my thoughts on it? My life could depend on this subject, but I don't have a solid answer yet. It's just past 10 p.m. I would usually be in my room right now. But I'm out here cleaning things up slower than usual in hopes of Mr. Rindo showing up. And then he lies and he doesn't show up. The others returned back to their world, or simply went back to their rooms. The cafe was empty, and the air inside felt much colder than usual. Mr. Rindo did say he'd come during the night, but what happened back there isn't something that could be easily dismissed. For all I know, he may send his usual, I'm busy, text to try and play it off. But I haven't received a text from Mr. Rindo yet. This is getting nerve-wracking. I was the one who I was the one who wanted to know more, but now I'm scared to talk about it. I keep cleaning the cafe in hopes that I can calm my racing mind when w Welcome Hello there, my dear cafe owner. Are you still open for business? Just for you. What we have extended our hours today. <laughs> Which means I have all this to myself tonight. Splendid. Mr. Rindo wears his usual calm and collected demeanor as he enters. Seeing him act like he usually does puts me at ease. Maybe he's just trying to act normal so that he doesn't put any pressure on me. Mr. Rindo sits down at the counter. Oh well then, can I get a, a can I get a cup of cafe au lait? I don't think I've had one recently. C coming right up. I begin to brew the coffee for the cafe au lait order. A coffee grinder whirs amid the silence. Hmm, that sound, that aroma, so peaceful. It's been only a week, but it feels like a lifetime since I was last here. I thought you grew tired of the coffee I brewed. Now that I think about it, it's been a while since I've seen Mr. Rindo from this side of the counter. And come on, even if I didn't want a cup of your coffee, I'd still come here to see you. You know, that's not much of a compliment. It makes it sound like I'm a terrible cafe owner. <laughs> not quite what I meant by that. The coffee is important to a cafe, sure, but the atmosphere of the cafe and the owner are just as important, if not more. I liked Enchanté back when someone was still around, but it's a lot more relaxed now. He's like, plus I like looking at you better. Uh... Someone isn't going to like that if he's listening right now. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be upset. The hot water drips slowly through the freshly ground coffee. There's a bit of a lull in our conversation. The dripping gets faster. The sound of dripping of coffee encroaches on our moment of silence. Mr. Rindo, what kind of conversations did you have with Grandpa? I really do like the background jazz music in this. It's like, God, it really does. You're like sitting leisurely at the cafe, having conversations about what Mr. Rindo and your grandpa used to talk about. Like, tell me about it. Oh, it's leisurely and nice. Then we're going to get to the drama shit of like what happened to his puppet sister. Like, <laughs> hmm. I suppose this conversation isn't any different from the ones I had with him. Which means that you'd playfully tease him like you do to me. Well, that's not fair to say. Not once have I ever playfully teased you. Mr. Rindo shrugs his shoulders, then looks at me with a wide smile on his face. He used to lecture me a lot. Told me to spend time talking to humans. He did? Yeah, Mr. Soan rarely said anything, but he sure knew how to pick his moments. He'd notice when I was tired or when I was feeling down, and would ask how I was doing with my work. I was drowning in my work at the time, so I think he said that to help broaden my view on things. He would tell me to try and focus my attention on other aspects of life and enjoy it as best I can. He squints his eyes in sorrow. It's as if he's mourning Grandpa. All without saying a word. It's as if Mr. Rindo doesn't feel like he has the right to say anything. All because he's with the GPM and is here to monitor the cafe. Because of so on, I was able to make honest connections with the non-humans here at Enchanté. I was able to see things clearer, and finally found enjoyment in speaking with Miser and the others. 
Uh, let's not forget that he also gave me the opportunity to meet the cute owner behind the counter. Wow, you thought my grandpa was cute? I'm not sure how to phrase this, but... Even if I were to leave the GPM, I'd most likely continue being a patron here. What matters is that I like everyone here, including you. And that takes priority over my job of monitoring the non-humans. Are you going to quit your job? He sounded so confident in what he said that I took it as truth, so I couldn't help but to ask to make sure. Couldn't help but ask to make sure, sorry. He quietly shakes his head. I can't. Sure, I've thought of leaving before. Like when Shizuku... Oh. Oh, that's why he calls her Ku. Shizuku. Okay. <clears throat> I almost tripped over her name. I was like, no, it's Shizuku. Okay. Yeah. Like when Shizuku turned into a non-human. And ever so naturally, Mr. Rindo touches on the main subject. Your younger sister... Is her name Shizuku? Mr. Rindo nods to answer my question. Yeah. Shizuku was the complete opposite of me. Straightforward and honest. So he's telling us he's a lion sack of shit. Okay. Mr. Rindo gazes at the coffee dripping slowly into the cup. Shizuku was working with Mikado at the GPM in the R&D department. Hence how they fell in love. And the reason she turned into a voiceless non-human is because... I wasn't able to kill Shizuku. That is an awesome place for that to go because we are a few minutes under time. But I have a feeling this is going to take more than a few minutes to do. So I'm going to stop at a little under time and we're going to find out. We're going to go to the flashback section. It's not going to be five minutes. It's going to be longer for this part. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stop it here and we're going to find out what happened to her in the next part. So uh, it's a good place to stop and I'm kind of cock blocking you, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.